bullet point, William Barr, West Christian Society to Blame for Mental Health and Drug Abuse, which is a conservative talking point I've heard before. I think primarily from, uh, I think I heard it from Ben Shapiro when he was on the Rubin Report with Jordan Peterson, and he referred to it as a God-shaped hole. Um... As someone who believes in God, I feel like there is there is a lot that you can get out of God. But as someone who previously was uh, atheist, I also feel like you can derive purpose on your own without it as well. But I have found my relationship with God to be very, very rewarding. So you're far you're like more spiritual about it than you are. I don't know. I don't think the organized religion aspect of it is what you're looking for. Like, you're, there, there's a level of spirituality behind what you, what you practice. Um, well, I believe that I am in constant communication with something. That does not mean I hear voices. That is a distinctly different thing. It does uh, mean that the greys are real. No, I, I no, feel like no. I'm in constant communication with something. Uh, I believe that something, and you can use whatever word you want, I'm lucky, uh, his, his mom, my mother-in-law, is actually very nice to me. Uh, that's a different experience uh, than a lot of people have. She's very nice. She uses the word God. Because she uses the word God, I feel comfortable with the word God. Whereas before, when I was an atheist, I would recoil violently from the word God. So whatever word you want to use, you want to call it the universe, you want to call it fate, you want to call it whatever you want. I feel like there is something with whom I am engaged in conversation. It doesn't necessarily use language. And uh, our friend John Sheehan, I asked him one day, I said, do you think that it is unique that I feel like I'm having this constant conversation? And John said, no. And I agree with him. I think in order to tap into whatever it is I am communicating with, uh, you just have to listen. When you listen for it, you will find it. Kind of like in a bad way, if you look for that shit, it, you will find it. Um, kind of off topic, a little personal, pardon my No, but I think it gives comment. people a little understanding of, of where we're coming from in, in regards to this topic, because there is, there is a bunch of stuff. Uh, about spirituality and religion that, that William Barr has addressed uh, and uh, you know something that I think is important so you want to do the first one the first bullet point subtopic subtopic one ascendancy it's a good word of secularism in America's mental illness violence and drug abuse. So we're just going to ignore Purdue Pharmaceuticals and manipulative advertising. Can I comment on that? Yeah. I really feel like religion did provide human beings purpose and a thing to do. And, and I really think that missing out on that potentially not real <laughs> purpose and thing to do is uh, is has created okay so Ben Shapiro calls it a God shaped hole it's a void of some sort and that's where Jordan Peterson comes in and he's like here look here are ways to find purpose I believe that you can find purpose without God I feel like using religion or God to find purpose can help or make it easy, air quotes. So I do think that does contribute. However, your other commentary on, pharmace on pharmaceutical industry uh, and advertising is also valid. That also contributes. However, there is a problem of purpose. There is a problem of purpose in our society today, at least our current society. When we when we pray, when we do puja, I some of the things that we do 
I think, I feel like this is a thing that people did because there was so much time so they could do these things. Whereas today it's like, I don't have time yeah. for anything. And it's like, to take time to sit down and pray, that like takes time. Well, at least in the way that we do it at in, current. I just did it before bed when I, I think, laid there as a Protestant. I think you could uh, also say like, well, so I think this is a mischaracterization of secularism as well. Uh, to say that if you don't believe in a God, you can't have purpose. Yeah, it's that's, ridiculous. That's sort of what that's William what Barr is kind of going into. I, I think, I, I continue to say this in my act too, is like, I do think the idea of religion is kind of awesome. It's just humanity fucks it up. And that's kind of, like, William Barr is an example of how humanity will fuck it up. Because he uses it for, like, these negative purposes. And claiming things like secularism... Um, and humanism and free thinking um, are bad. Are the like these non-religious things that question the and specifically the title of the article does talk about Christianity, right? Like he does not want you to have like a uh, polytheistic viewpoint or a paganistic viewpoint. Uh, or spiritual or it's spiritual. Not about it's, religion, it's, it's yeah, about it's about Christianity. Yeah. So I think uh, and and usually it's these. Like, in India right now, there is a secular movement. There is a movement uh, where, you know, to kind of back up a little bit, India is a highly superstitious country. It's also a highly um, religious country. And those two things can be connected and tied together. And uh, that opens up a window for a bunch of people to exploit just regular working class people that want to believe in something, right? That want to have a purpose, that want to say that if I put my belief into this thing, then I will get something in return for it. And that's where I have a problem with religion, is this this window for exploitation because of what this belief system can do. And look, if you want to have moral accountability, if you want to have righteousness via religion, that's awesome. As long as you're not pushing that religion down people's throats, I have no issue with whatever you do personally, right? Because it is a personal relationship with God, so leave it be a personal relationship with God. But let's not ignore, like, let's not ignore the fact that uh, the reason why there's an opioid crisis in this in America right now is because Purdue Pharmaceuticals were like, oh, opioids are super addicting, and we can charge whatever the fuck we want for them, and also whatever people can't pay for it, it's also just heroin. Like, that's kind of what they did, and they had email interactions between each other to say that we know this is addictive, and people are just going to buy it and get addicted to it, and that's great because that means more profit, um, and, and then using advertising to be like, do you have twitchy eyes? Do you blink a lot? Are you breathing? Does your Are nose you make breathing? a noise when you breathe? Oh my God, is your vocal cord vibrating right now? Like all of this stuff is just, is Hilarious. meant to kind of drive you into that point where like none of that has to do with religion. So we just ignore it and we're like, yeah, it's the absence of this, of the Christian God. It's the absence of the Christian God, and that's the reason why people are sad. It's like, what? But, the, uh, let's, let's go to the second point on that, too. It's not even sad, though, too, because my initial reaction was, opioid crisis, heroin addicts, well, yeah, of course, life sucks. Why wouldn't people be addicted to drugs? And then I found out that a good portion of those folks are older folks who were prescribed those medications, who were prescribed Oxycontin, for example. I think that might be That's the main pharmaceutical. thing. Um, and I have family members uh, who, who qualify for that exact thing that I'm talking about. Um, so... And they continue to make money off of my family members. And my family members continue to have negative cognitive effects due to their addiction. But um, legitimately qualifying for said medication, Oxycontin, because of medical diagnoses. So what do you do? 
do you just stop taking the pain medication that helps you with your medical diagnosis? But this is where or, a secular society can come into play because a secular society would I feel like there's you. other things they could do, to be honest, but yeah. this is the one that's most socially acceptable, I think. But you Also, know, legally. In, in a secular society, you can also teach people that uh, this is addictive. This is an addictive substance, and you should really take this carefully. Here's yeah, how you no one take said it. that to me. No one said that to me when they put me you on should. Klonopin. No one said, this is a highly addictive medication. You should not be on it long. I found that out from the internet after taking it regularly for like five years. And then this guy has to hang out with me while I go through withdrawals from a medication that nobody properly educated me on. And that's for my psychiatrist who went to fucking Harvard. And that's, that's, that's what you do in a secular society is that you're supposed to teach people about this stuff. You're supposed to help them critically think about their life. But in a Christian society, quote unquote, right? Like, which is the society that we want to live in is like, yeah, we're just going to fucking give you a bunch of pills. It's fine. God will take care of it. It's like, no, no, this is how we fuck up the idea of religion. It's like God, God's not supposed to take care of your addictions caused by a fucking industry that gives you shit about their bottom line more than they do about your actual health. Well, we also had a friend in from Canada this week, and she talked about an experience where she went to the doctor, um, and they told her, okay, well, you need to sleep eight hours a night, and you need to eat healthy food, and you need to exercise. And that's Canadian seriously, seriously, these three things will solve so many problems. At this point, that is basically the prescription for my head trauma. Sleep, eat healthy, exercise. There's more to it than that, but I'm not on any medications for it. They don't like have medications for concussion. Uh, there, there's, there's this and that related to other things but not like a specific medication for that only like physical therapy things as far as I know at current if you know something else comment below because the internet seems to have a lot more information than my fucking doctors do so your comments are welcome below or above or wherever the fuck they end up now uh ready for let's do bullet sub, sub, sub topic sub two. topic two Lashed out against New, against New Jersey's LGBTQ curriculum! Exclamation point! Only good thing to come of New Jersey, the LGBTQ thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, uh, William Barr, William Barr, Barr okay. lashed out against the uh, LGBTQ curriculum. Like, what's the uh, curriculum? I think it's just Gay like people. They exist. Yeah, I feel like it's just including their history into the curriculum, and it's not like. All right, all right, you straights, huh? Get your dicks in order, because here we go. We're going to get you right up. Like, they're not... Here, I'll pull that up. <laughs> they're not trying to do that. Yeah, see if you can find the site. See if you can find what the New Jersey curriculum is. But he, like, freaked out about it, apparently. And it's like, come on, man. We got to encourage New Jersey to do good things. <laughs> like, we really... Yeah, you know? it's LGBTQ history, according to this... Uh headline so let me look a little bit more into okay. it look a state that is uh most famously known to be represented by chris christie uh a person who doesn't understand uh when to stop eating uh, and uh bruce springsteen who uh is not for the people because his nickname is the boss uh, and his mansion has gates uh i feel like we need some positive like social movements coming out of the state of New Jersey because people shit on New Jersey all the time. I shit on New Jersey all the time. Me I'm guilty too. of it. Like it's just every Terrible. time I go to that state I'm just like what is happening here? How are you people still running this state? <laughs> this is insanity. This is crazy. <laughs> and now that we have a positive thing that come out of it, fucking William Barr has to go out and be like, you guys are going to get God. Fuck you people. <laughs> Oh, this is really cute. This is from NBC News. Okay. Um, quote, 
These lessons have also been linked to reduced absenteeism. That's just teaching about um, how LGBTQ members of the community, as well as folks with disabilities, uh, contributed in history. That seems to be the extent of it. Without reading the actual bill, which I swear to God, nowadays you have to go that far to actual, actually get reality. But this is NBC, and if you're not the CNN, the Fox, or the MSNBC, it seems like it's better than those. Better, yeah. NBC is okay. Kind of. Yeah, they're. Whatever. It's all pretty awful. I have a degree in journalism. Okay, it's all pretty fucking awful. So that's really cool. Um, Seventeen percent of students in schools with an inclusive curriculum uh, missing school in the past because of feeling unsafe, compared to thirty-three percent of students who attend schools without. I actually don't know what I just read. Meant a recent GLSEN report states. So because they're including this history, like people are actually excited to more come to kids school. are coming to school because of feel. the inclusive curriculum. That's, That's pretty awesome. cool. Way to go, New Jersey. You might have done something good for once. You know? It's like every every every, every state that I've made fun of has like one thing that they've done good. You know? It's like the New Jersey has this. Uh, in Florida, ex-cons and felons can vote. That's like a pretty cool thing. And that's Florida. So, you know, like people shit on Florida all the time. And it's like, all right, they got one good thing. Let's keep, let's keep trying to do more. Do more good things. I mean, I get it. I know people in the LGBTQ community who are Christian and they believe that, that what they're doing is a sin. Me too. Well, I, I it have friends. me out. It really bums me out because I don't feel that way. As someone who was raised in Christianity, I still do not feel like, uh, I still, I still just, I don't feel like it's a sin. I, that's ha basically how I grew up in the Christian church, okay? It was like I was told something or I was told that the Bible said something and I'd be like, oh yeah, but God is all loving. So like whatever that text says doesn't really matter. That's what I grew up. And then I found the Satanic Bible, and I was like, oh shit, there's actually a text out there that says things that are meaningful. <laughs> that I don't that have to be like, oh, well, God doesn't. Okay, that actually so means what it says. Just, just to clarify, the, the Satanic Bible, the, the re there's, there was one that was re written recently by the author Anton LaVey, which a lot of people can say a lot of damning things about him. But it's a pretty good read. And it doesn't worship Satan. That's not what it's about. It's kind of like... It's kind of like... An old troll move from the 60s. Where this guy was like, Let's rile up the Christians with this satanic Bible. Uh, and they did. But it's not about worshipping Satan. Basically, the number one tenet is... Uh, don't hurt yourself and don't hurt other people. But otherwise, do whatever the fuck you want! And they were all about women's rights and feminism and shit. And I was like, where have I been? I was also like 13 or 14 years old. Uh, French Canadian boyfriend sent it to me and I was like, very Christian. Like pregnancy scare, said the rosary, Christian. And I was like, oh my God, what are you doing sending me this propaganda about Satan? You're gonna go to hell, don't do it. And then I read it and I was like, wow, this shit's actually really good. I'm not a Satanist, just to point that out. I feel like I've practiced all the religions at this point. Uh, currently, I, I, I'm practicing Hinduism. I feel very good about it, and I feel very good about my personal connection with God. I don't really believe that there is a Satan at all, and I still believe the Satanic Bible is a great read. I, I, don't, I mean, feel like Satan gets up. a bad rap, all right? All he did was speak out. He punishes know? the bad. Doesn't yeah. that make him a good guy? He's not that bad. You know, it, it his just dad's just mad at him. Yeah, his dad's being kind of a dick. <laughs> if anything, oh my it's just God. like God's the bad guy in this, this situation. This episode is just going to Bill Burr in someone's mind. <laughs> the words come out of my mouth, they go into your head, they get all fucked up, and then that comes out. Oh, it's just, Lord. It's just like, you know, he was just like, hey, God, I got a question. You're banished. Yeah. Fuck you, you little insolent piece of shit. Basically. Nobody is allowed to say any of those words again. 
Nobody repeat any of those words. If you do, you gotta go hang out with that insolent piece of shit. This one doesn't count. This one doesn't. Well, there's not really a Satan in Hinduism. There's just there's demons. There's just like, a, yeah, but and they're there's all... the concept of evil. But in Hinduism, you reincarnate. And then the whole goal is to attain moksha, which is like enlightenment, which is... You become one with the universe is essentially what happens. So you don't need to come back and keep living this life and like, you know, basically it's like when we can stop giving a shit about Twitter, uh, I think that we can all ascend into moksha. Well, I won't won't be moksha-ing anytime soon. When William Barr... Can, I'm can literally go. looking at a tweet. I right know. Now. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can. I can tell. It's a screenshot of a tweet. That's even it's, worse. Oh my god, you're we're so far away from moksha <laughs> at this point. Uh, when William Barr can stop giving a shit about LGBTQ curriculum that makes kids actually want to come to school, yeah, we can fucking we can get back to it. What's uh, what's the next point? What were we at? This we're is three. This one. Subtopic three. Quote. Organized destruction of religion! Exclamation point. That's what William Barr claims is happening in America right now. It's the organized destruction of religion. Who's doing the organizing? It's unspecified, but it is somebody. It's the atheists. There's a whole community on YouTube. It's but none of them the are skeptic going down community like... on YouTube. Yeah, but the skeptic community. It was is not... real big in like 2014 or something. Yeah, but the skeptic community, the atheist community, the agnostics, which is which is where I'm at, like, we're not going out there and, like, you know, kicking churches down and punching fucking priests, you know, and, like, rubbing our dicks on synagogues and shit. Like, like we're not doing any of that sort of stuff. It's just all we do is, like, hey, uh, maybe don't take it super literal. Like... <laughs> You know, like, maybe just be cool to each other. And if that's the... If if saying treat each other, literally treat each other the way that you want, you would like to be treated is the organized destruction of religion, you should reevaluate what your religion is. You want to do the next one? Bullet point four. DOJ will fight for American liberties like living according to our faith. Quotes. Asterix militaristic question mark? What about American liberty of loving who you want to? Question mark. Being your truest self? Question mark. Thank you. <laughs> so the Department of Justice is apparently gonna fight for the American liberty to practice your faith. Only if you're apparently Christian though. Because that's the only thing William Barr actually keeps fucking talking about. His his Christian faith is how America is a Christian nation. And despite the fact that we have freedom of religion in this country and the freedom... And to, to me, if you have the freedom of religion, then you do get to be, be spiritual, you do get to be a secularist, you do get to be a humanist, and you get to be an atheist, and you get to be a, a agnostic. Without any question, and that's your right in this country. Yeah. Uh, the United States is not a Christian nation. The United a States is a secular nation. The United States has freedom of religion so that you can practice whatever the fuck you want as long as you don't hurt yourself or anyone else. Am I right? Ah, ah, ah. Satanic We're a Satanist country. Bible. <laughs> Satanic Bible. It's so funny. I just put that together in my head. Satan won't you love oh. us. That's beautiful. Satan won't love. That's what I'm gonna do. Is instead of Christian rock, I'm gonna uh, start a Satan it's rock called band. Black metal, babe. Uh, you didn't invent it. Move on. It's, it's a not little working. different than black metal. <laughs> it's just a lot of power ballads that repeat the same word over and over again, and it's genius. But I also feel like it's kind of like. The Department of Justice fighting for Christian faith, doesn't that sound militaristic, though? Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, doesn't it sound like it's like we're going to take arm? Like, it sounds like the Crusades again. Like, William Barr is calling for Crusades Part 2. Like, didn't you learn from the last one, bro? It's not a good look. It's not a good look. It doesn't make Christians, like, look better 
than, than anybody else. Like, it's a bad situation, bro. So maybe tone it down. And in America, you do have the freedom to love who you want to love. So if, the, if, if that, that is part of your American liberties, your American liberties and freedoms involve loving who you want to love, marrying who you want to marry, being who you really want to be, right? Like the, being the truest version of, of yourself. Those are all part of your American liberties. So if William Barr is against the LGBTQ community or teaching the real history of the LGBTQ community, then you are not fighting for American liberties, dog. Truth. Next bullet point. Next bullet point. Uh, oh, wow. This is a whole page. You don't have to. <laughs> okay. You're no, doing, I'm you're, doing you're, the whole you're page. Do the whole page? Okay. Yeah, this is my um, dramatic reading of Chris, Chris Mohan's notes. Bullet point number seven. Five, three. Decreased influence of Judeo-Christian values and wreckage of families equals depression, suicidal rates, alienated males, drug epidemic, and senseless violence. Not overworked Americans that afford a family? Question mark. Not pharma companies that care more about their bottom lines than people's health? Question mark. Not an antiquated view on masculinity? Question mark. I don't know why I read the <laughs> question mark. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Uh, so that's one of the things William Barr said is that the decrease of Judeo-Christian values uh, and the wreckage of families is what's causing depression, increased suicide rates, uh, more violence. Uh, what else was it? There was, there was a couple other things that he said that there was... Right. Um, health, antiquated view on masculinity. Yeah. yeah. Alienating men. Alienating men, uh, and then like a senseless violence epidemic. Drug epidemic. Drug epidemic. Right. So he blames all of that on decreased Judeo-Christian values. Look, first of all, uh, I know plenty of fucking former Christians that are super traumatized <laughs> by just being Christians. Like I know a bunch of them that are just like. Uh, because I grew up Christian, my mind got super fucked up and I had to like deprogram myself. If you don't know those people, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. Yeah, they're out there. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like, you know, if, if you want to talk about, uh, mental health issues like depression and stress, anxiety, all of that, like, are you just not going to say that it's because the American economy has gotten to this point where people want the people our age in, in their 20s and 30s uh, we're both in our 30s now but um, don't have two three jobs just to make ends meet like don't have to struggle all the time and that doesn't create anxiety like uh, that creates way fucking more anxiety than not believing in Judeo-Christian values needing like the, the stress of money creates an incredible amount of anxiety for people uh, so you're saying it's a false equivalent I 100% think it's a false equivalency, right? Like, you, the same thing with the pharmaceutical industry. It's like, pharmaceutical industry does care more about their bottom lines than they do about uh, the health and benefit of the people, where they keep driving up the prices of, of, of pills and prescriptions and all that, which skyrockets health care, which, again, puts uh, the, the problem of how do people have health care? Like, how do we make sure everybody has health care in this country? Uh, and it creates that problem, right? And then... Uh, making men feel antiquated or whatever. No, you just have an antiquated view of what masculinity no, is. alienated males. Alienated males. Um, your idea is that it's an antiquated view of masculinity. Yeah, I would because, have to agree. Because the yeah, because what it means to be a man is has dramatic. I think dramatically shifted, especially in the last, I would say, decade. I think you're right. I think there's a push against it, too. Like, uh, the Steven Crowders and the one McGinnis is... What's his name? Gavin. Gavin McGinnis is. Uh, they push against it. And I feel like that's fair. Because, well, I feel like Crowder and McGinnis are overcorrecting maybe a little bit. For sure. Um, I think that there is a overcorrection on the other end where there's like this push for the feminization of men 
as well. Which so there's like a, a push in both ways. Yes, you can't have a good balance, but there there is an antiquated view of masculinity, and we can look at gender roles differently. And I was just talking about non-binary, like non-binary, not, um, not necessarily fitting perfectly into a male or female slot. And I would have to say that there is a lot of our relationship that is quite non-binary, and even in other relationships, meaning that we don't fit our traditional gender roles despite me reading his fucking notes like his goddamn secretary in the fucking car. But you don't, you don't have drives. to do that. <laughs> However, the car, the fucking car, little trophy wife over here has to have, is like the most the expensive piece of machinery I, what? air quotes, have ever owned in my fucking life. But only because we're married do I own it to a degree, because I don't know, kind of half and half. But I don't believe in alimony. So I'm not even going to address were we ever to, because it's not going to happen. Because I'm not, as much as I, I'm just not, let's not even put that. We made a promise to each other. The car does not need we're to hear your propaganda it. against it. But it's his car. But Jesus, just needy motherfucker. It's a good car. It's all-wheel drive. It's going to help in the winter. He had to have be, his all-wheel oh drive. Oh, my God. He it's had to be have his so CRV. much beneficial. He couldn't just get a nice Honda You were the one that gets For, suggested. like, half the fucking price. What are you talking about? You were the one that suggested it. I tried and like hell to get you We didn't want to get the fit, fit because the fit has a, a, a CVT. No, you wanted all-wheel drive. I wanted the all-wheel drive because the all-wheel all drive, drive is going to help with the with the winter stuff. Because mm -hmm. because I'm going up north in the winter. I'm going into Maybe the, don't go up north in the winter. That's crazy. That's when people in the north come out to do things. <laughs> That's not an unfair uh, assessment, actually. But, yeah, we don't have... We don't have binary gender roles. I, I, He's I, more of the cook. Yeah, I do I do a bunch of the cooking. I'm more of the breadwinner. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I'm pretty sure we make about the same amount. We we make the exact same of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like the exact same of, we're going to be able to pay our rent this month, right? <laughs> yeah, <we're... laughs> that's, that's about where we're at. Uh, so we're, like we're on bragging. pretty equal footing. We don't... I feel like I'm bragging now, yeah. But, but one, like one more, one more brag. We don't really pay attention to what we buy for each other. Or, like, how much we spend on each other. We kind of do, like, did you get this one? Or did you get the last time? I'll get this one. You get it. Like, we kind of trade oh, off. Oh, yeah. Like when Unless we go out he's keeping a mental note, and I don't know about it, and there's just, like, this deep resentment slowly building... Uh, yeah, we don't really keep track of how much we spend on each other. My birthday gift was only $15, and I spent 75 on you, you fucking cuck. God, that, you that's think, not is that happening. a relationship that, that you're illustrating for everybody? Yeah, weren't you kind of wow. in one of those ones? Kind of. Ooh. Kind of? This is the gossip portion of the podcast. What is this? Websit? Dispatch. This Road is the gossip part of the reflection where we talk about old relationships and how fucking awful they were. Yeah, she tried to push you and into that binary, babe. Because of the Judeo Christian breakdown in our society, because of the gays. <laughs> That's my William Barr impression. Uh, to, to bring it back to where we are. As the LGBTQ member of the car, I would just like to point out that I'm pansexual. That's all. This is my coming out video. I missed coming out day and I didn't have like a really beautiful story to share and I'm kind of sad about it. I just think people I'm not good at being people, gay. Pretty people, I I'm guess. Sad. Like I don't really know where I fit into that spectrum, I guess. Anyway, I, I, have, I have some questions about you, but Three. bullet point number 10. I don't know if that's the accurate number. <laughs> Judeo-Christian standards. The ultimate utilitarian rules for human conduct. Wow, that's intense. That's a quote. That's a quote from William Barr. Where in the utilitarian rules does it say to hate the gays? I paraphrase that. He put LGBTQ plus like a good boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read that quote again. Uh ultimate utilitarian rules for human contact. 
that's a bit much. It's. I think. I think that the anti-gay uh, script in the Bible. I think is that um, like. Adam should not lay down with John or something. Which, like, what, you can't even cuddle? Yeah, I mean, what are we talking about? Is it because everybody had twin cots back in the day? You Nobody know, invented a full bed till like, year two? You know what I found out very recently that I would love to enlighten you on? Um, that he was... Aramaic is a dead language, and that's what we're translating the Bible from. So whatever the translation is, who knows? This is why I advocate for a personal relationship. Um, and I don't know. You don't have to. You don't have to but base see, your life on ancient texts. I guess there's some good stuff in there. There's I feel like there's nice good stuff, stuff in, in there. all of them. Yeah, all of them have the like Hindu nice texts stories. too. There's some amazing stuff in there. Yeah, some of those there's stories are pretty cool. There's also some stuff that makes me think I don't know. You got some stuff about dragons in there. We got some stuff about some <laughs> ten-headed demons. Dragons? Isn't there a thing about dragons and shrimp? Like that's dragons. that's in the same book. I Leviticus, don't, isn't I that don't Leviticus? Know. I feel like comment Leviticus below comment. or above wherever it is. Leave a comment about wherever you think dragons exist. On the right the hand Bible. side, stage left. What's our final note? Uh, religion under attack for the last 50 years. Oh, William, that's another William Barr statement is that religion has been under attack for the last 50 that's years. That's it? Is he confused? Okay. Uh, is he confusing religion uh, with. Black people, minorities, women, and the LGBTQ community? Like, did he just confuse? I'm sorry, that's probably really loud pop. <laughs> I guess. He just... It was... <laughs> that's fucking funny, though. Like, what the fuck? I, I feel like William Barr is uh, probably paid off by some kind of lobby that has ties to the church. Uh... I don't know, he might really feel that way. That's very possible, but he might also feel that way. I feel like there are a lot of conservatives and Christians who feel that way. I feel like there are Christians who believe that this is a Christian nation or, you know, it was genuinely founded by Christians. And to be completely honest, I feel like that is Quakers. We part of where Quakers. Our, our problems, uh, part of where our problems come from are so the, these puritanical, pure, yeah. you know, these puritanical systems that sort of um, disgraced any kind of expression, and we were just talking about this, weren't we? Yeah. And we like were demanded about just work. That was all. That was all that was pious was just work. And now people are killing themselves working. And I don't know. I guess not as bad as in Japan where. Thank you, friend I just met. Jen McCullough. Jen educated me that they have a word for that in Japan. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will I will say this. Uh, she had a good set. I enjoyed set. her set at Acoustic Cafe last night. Because we're working all night on a Monday. Because we're desperate. We really want to pay that rent. And eat. Uh, Both are very good things. <laughs> so as, as sort of a way to kind of bow tie it a little bit what you were talking about with the personal relationship to God is I think that that is the aspect of religion that I am most okay with is is if it is sort of a not even sort of if it is a personal relationship with God because I you know as an agnostic I do believe that there is something in place that runs things there are too many patterns there's too there's too many specific ways things work on the micro scale do you to believe the macro it scale. or do you see it as something that is possible I, I see it as something that is very possible. I have no definite okay. proof. There. That's, um, that's an important delineation. Because I yeah. do kind of feel like you lean atheist. And there are different yeah. delineations for it. Like atheist, agnostic, agnostic, atheist. I don't know them. Educate me. Comment to the right. <laughs> Just comment, comment somewhere. Comment to where you believe God is. <laughs> Above, below, <laughs> whatever. But, but I think the personal relationship aspect of it is what I believe in. What, what I, what I, I can vibe with the most. And with people like William Barr, uh, the reason why it's not personal 
is because one, they'd have to actually take accountability for the incredible amount of hatred they probably have for certain communities like the LGBTQ plus community. And two, how are you supposed to exploit poor people if it's a personal relationship with God? Because it's all about that club and making that cheddar, baby. For, for William Barr, anyway. That's, I feel like that's his personal God. Is, uh, it's just a portrait of Andrew Jackson. Uh, he's on the $20 bill, right? Andrew Jackson. Did you know that they were supposed to change it to Harriet Tubman? Yes. Oh, you were watching that with yeah. me. Was that real? Yeah, Comment man. to the right. <laughs> I just, I just heard it. I just heard it on a cartoon show. It was a cartoon show, and I was like, I never knew that that was a thing that was going to happen. But if it was, I'd be all for it. That sounds pretty rad. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm all for the personal relationship. Should we wrap it up? Too? We're cute. I think we're real cute. I love us. Oh, boy. I do. I love you. I do. Yeah. Alright, should we really wrap this pretty. up? <laughs> You're my pretty husband. Oh, man. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.